The social engineering experiment is over. A great experiment has been taking place throughout the world, but especially in California to get people out of their cars and riding bikes or walking on the sidewalks. It sounds really nice, and when compared to cities like Amsterdam, where 68% of the population rides a bike to work or school in their city of 880,000, it looks very good in pictures, almost like a vacation. Amsterdam happens to be flat and lends itself to biking. But in the United States, there is a car culture very deeply rooted, and only 1% choose to ride a bike here, mostly men. This is similar in other countries throughout the world, like China, where cars are prominent and hardly a bike is seen. The car rose and continues to rise to the top of the transportation mode of choice in most countries, and where prosperity exists, most people are choosing to own a car with all of the many conveniences that go along with it. As a result, U.S. cities and even China cities have been primarily designed around the automobile to serve the vast majority of the people. But there has been a persistent effort to change transportation policies on how to spend transportation monies. In California recently, legislation was passed to change the CEQA process to bypass everything to do with traffic impacts. Until this year, 2020, EIRs looked at traffic impacts and delay. Now they don't. This is creating confusion and unexpected results in many cities. The purpose of this change was so that very large developments could survive the review process, such as an EIR, since traffic is no longer a factor of accountability. This enables more skyscrapers to be built without having to address their traffic. Previously, large developments could not pass the traffic tests and they didn't get approved in the EIR process. Now the idea is build density, ignore the traffic. A new high-rise skyscraper apartment complex built near to a skyscraper office complex is the goal. People will choose to walk to work. That's the hope. Car traffic should reduce. That's fine for San Francisco. But what about the vast majority of all other small cities that don't even have one skyscraper? People in those smaller cities don't really live that way. They don't think that way and making a commute by bike or bus is not practical. The systems are not in place and the distances are far too long to be realistic. It's just not practical to build dense high-rise residential in non-urban cities. People have chosen. They have chosen to live in a house with a yard and a garage as a default everywhere else. As some policymakers work diligently to social engineer the transportation system to get people out of their cars, possibly by ignoring the car problem, in the meantime, traffic volumes keep going up. They are always going up. Here are the facts. Let's choose the city of Los Angeles in California as an example. In Los Angeles, there was a 30% increase in the number of vehicles between 2006 and 2016. Today, that total is about 2 million vehicles, up 600,000 from 10 years before. There was also a 30% increase in the smaller number of people that decided to ride a bike to work. This was up 5,000 new bikes from about 15,000 in 2006. Total bike commuters now, about 20,000 in Los Angeles. When you compare these two travel modes in terms of sheer numbers, you get the following idea. 500 bike commuters added every year in Los Angeles. 60,000 new automobiles added every year in Los Angeles. What this means in terms of sheer numbers is that for every new bike commuter that hits the road, there will also be 120 new vehicles that hit the road every day. Complete Streets is not changing this. Complete Streets has some good ideas, but it's not changing this. And the fatality rates are also not improving. In some ways, Complete Streets is wishful thinking and has been wishful thinking for decades now. 
the shift has not taken place in any significant way to get people out of their cars. The attempt to social engineer the populace has not been successful. Bike enthusiasts need to understand the safety aspects of this. It will benefit them to understand that Complete Street's status quo will not help them. As long as traffic keeps increasing, and it is, and because of the recent changes to CEQA, there are no adequate mitigations to decrease vehicle congestion, then bicycles will be more at risk. Pedestrians also more at risk. An angry or aggressive driver is a more dangerous driver. What every cyclist needs to understand is that even if bicycle commuting is growing by 3% per year, so is vehicle ownership and usage growing by 3% per year. For every person in Los Angeles that decides to ride a bike, there will also be 120 new cars on the road to join that cyclist. Let that sink in. This is why we can no longer ignore the vehicle traffic. To do so is to put our head in the sand. It means that riding a bike is actually becoming more dangerous each year, given the continuous growth of vehicles. Complete Streets changes some street cross-sections, adds bike lanes, usually by taking away lanes from cars, increasing the delays. But it does not eliminate the numerous new cars, 60,000 per year in Los Angeles alone, from joining the streets. Complete Streets is not successful in getting people out of their cars. The statistics prove this. The statistics show that vehicle ownership is constantly on the rise and there are far more vehicles being added to each physical road each day than bicycles. One new bike, 120 new cars, every day, Los Angeles. It is imperative that cities and counties continually strive to mitigate traffic impacts from new development and to have plans to keep traffic moving with minimal delay. An angry driver is a dangerous driver to pedestrians and cyclists alike. The idea of policymakers to ignore traffic delays and chaos is a failing idea. It's causing safety to be compromised. Cities and counties should diligently plan and devise roadway systems that accommodate all modes of traffic equally and do it at satisfactory levels of service like LOSC. The trend to ignore cars and traffic operations at intersections is making roadways even less safe for pedestrians and bikes. Prism Engineering is seeking solutions to fix traffic problems before they become an even worse safety hazard for our pedestrian, bike, and all modes of traffic. They all matter. Traffic Engineering matters.